Welcome to Fluttershy's Guide to Massaging a Bear. This is going to be a little bit about the benefits of massage, and then we're also going to talk about a few tips, a few techniques that you can use, and we're also, yes, we are going to be doing a few demonstrations. For the demonstrations, we will be asking for volunteers. Thank you very much. I know a lot of people want to volunteer. We won't have enough time to work on everybody. I'm sorry. But we are going to ask for volunteers uh, for a, a few certain criteria, just so you can get an idea. The reason I wanted to do the Guide to Massaging a Bear is because there are a lot of people out there I know that are just bigger people. As a licensed massage therapist myself, I have seen so many people come in and out of my office, some of whom are so small I worry I'm going to break them just by looking at them. And others, I know that if I don't drop everything I've got on them, they're just going to be like, have you started yet? <laughs> and I'll be like, I started! It doesn't always work that way, but hey, it's all good. <laughs> so, there are a few things we're going to be going over. The presentation itself doesn't take too long because I want to be able to leave a fairly good amount of time for a few of you to get a good idea. Um, I have my good friend and great colleague, one of my best friends in the world, Carly in the back. Give her a hand. Carly has graciously volunteered an hour of her time out of another uh, event that she has been at all weekend to come here and give us a hand. She will also be doing some of the demonstrations so you can get an idea of exactly what it is that we do and a few ideas of things that you can do to help out when you want to give a massage to someone who just needs a little bit extra in there. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So the objectives of this panel, we're going to be discussing the what about massage, like what is it exactly, uh, a little bit about the why you want to have a massage, some of it about the how, exactly how, you to, how you're going to be able to perform one without being licensed for it. And then we're going to get a little bit of summary, a little bit of demonstration, talk a little bit about our specific style, and then go into questions. Yes, there will be audience participation. Uh, if you have any questions, I ask that you please wait until at least the demonstrations are about to begin. And we can get this along quickly so we can get a few of you to have a, actually a bit of an experience receiving the style of massage that we do. So the first is the what? Massage therapy is the manipulation of muscles, joints, and soft tissues of the body by use of the hands, elbows, feet, fingers, hoops, other tools, whatever you have to achieve the desired effect. Desired effect is typically relaxation, but there are many other things that massage can be used for. The why? Here are some of the things that it can be used for. I'm not going to list them all off. I'm going to give you a moment to take a look at it. Some of these, I, will, I would bet you my con payment that some of these, everyone here has had at least once. A few good examples that I see a lot of, alleviating low back pain, improving the range of motion, increased joint flexibility. I'm not reading it in any particular order. Relief headache and migraines. Um, exercise and stretch, weaker, weak, tighter, atrophied muscles. These are issues that a lot of people I've seen have. I have not yet to date met a single person who couldn't benefit because of some issue they had. Whether they knew it or not, I've been able to find something. Anyone have any of these? Okay, so a few of you, like one or two. Got it, I got it. <laughs> There's a lot of you. The how, the way to give a massage is not absolute. There are many different varieties, many modalities or styles to choose from. We're gonna teach them all to you as quickly as we can because we know that you're interested in everything that there is to know about massage. Or, maybe not. <laughs> Hang on, we gotta check that. Okay, so we can't really do it, but we do want to get started. We do want to talk a little bit about some of what you can expect from a massage therapist, just a little bit of a few things to, to prepare for if you decide to have a massage, but most importantly, we want to teach you how to give a massage, not necessarily everything we know, because there are reasons for that, but we do want you to be able to give a good massage. So I'm actually going to open it up just a little bit to questions before we get started. So. Any questions about massage that we can start with, that I can answer now, and then we can go into some demonstrations and a little bit of information? Yes? So like, what's the best way to seek out a problem area? The best way to seek out a problem area is to ask them where the pain is. Okay. So the first thing I'm, I'm gonna do when I have a person come in, they're like, oh, I've got issues, I've got, I'm, I'm, I understand that, that's great. I understand you have issues, great. Tell me what it is, if I don't know, I can't assess it. If I know where they're having issues, then based off of 
my studies as a massage therapist, I can tell you what's wrong and how to fix it. Um, can you give me an example? Like someone comes in, they say their shoulder hurts, and then how can I find out exactly why it's hurting? Excellent that question. Come on up. Does your shoulder hurt? No. Okay. Who's got a shoulder hurt? Me. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mine would be a bit of a trick, though, so it might throw you off. Uh, I'll take the challenge. Come here. Hey. So you know what's wrong with this, so we'll see. I don't profess to know everything, yep. but as a massage therapist, I've encountered many different things. Okay. So what I'm going to have you do, I see you work with a cane, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So you stand without it. Yes, I can. Okay. What I want you to do is just stand loose, relaxed, arms to your side. Just stand however you normally stand. If that means it's this, that's what I want to say. Is. I hope it's not, but it, it, I usually whatever is relaxed. Left, so. Okay, right. whatever is relaxed. So the first thing I want to take a look at, actually for your view, I'm going to have you scoot just over here a little bit. So you go ahead. No, face this way. Fine. Okay, so uh, okay. among the things I'm going to be checking for, I can look, you see this, the hem of the shirt right here? It makes a straight line along the shoulder. That's the way clothes are designed. This also helps me to know exactly what direction his shoulder goes out. If I look at it from here, I can see that it's angled this way across his back. Ideally, your head would be back just a little bit, and it should go straight towards his ear. So what that tells me is his shoulder is being pushed forward. Now, you asked about shoulder pain. Do you experience shoulder pain? Yes. Where do you experience it usually? Uh, along there. Along here in the front? Yes. Okay. Do you experience it here in the back at all? Uh, a tiny bit. A tiny bit. Okay. How often do you experience it in the back? Um, order as often as up here. It's order as often as up here. It's, up it's also almost always up here occasionally in the back. Okay. So I'm going to... I'm going to you don't mind if I'm touching you? That's fine. Okay. I I'm going to take a look. Off. So this is one of the things that I see a lot. And press along this area and I can feel that the muscles are really tight up here. Mm -hmm. Muscles in the back right here are also really tight, I can tell. Now here's the thing, if the muscles up here get really tight, mm -hmm. what do you do for a living? I have disabled, I'm sure. Obviously. <laughs> but what do you do? I mean, uh, you live, right? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you do that thus is your living? Uh, usually uh, watching TV, occasionally working on uh, hand projects. And okay, so you're familiar with this position? Uh, yeah. Okay. Using so stuff like stuff like that. Using computers is another good example. Mm -hmm. If you work in an office, if you're sitting in a chair all day, if you play computer games like I do, hey, whatever your passion is, yeah. if the muscles in here are getting really tight, uh, sorry, the muscles in here will be getting really tight because they're used to being forward. Mm -hmm. If these are getting tight, they are pulling on the rest of you, and this is why. Your scapula is shaped kind of like a shield with a little bone that sticks in the front. That bone that sticks in the front connects to your pecs in the front. If these muscles get tight, this is what happens to my shoulder. Everybody see that? So, what I would rather do, instead of just working like here where you have pain, I would work here where you're having the pain in order to get all of this muscle tension to release, relax, and that'll allow the shoulder to go back because it's no longer being pulled forward. That is one major cause of shoulder pain. Also, upper back pain, very similar. Go ahead, you can have it. Okay. Sit there. Oh, wherever you want. Okay. Back in your seat. It's all good. Because the, the trick with mine is I could damage the nerve plexus and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's unusual. Uh, the muscle stuff. Well, you're going to be fun to work if I can tell. Yeah. All right. Were there any other questions before we begin? Yes. Lower back. Huh? Lower back pain. Lower back pain. Who has lower back pain? You. Yes, you. Come here. You have lower back pain? I do. Okay. Sorry. Now for this one, I'm going to have you stand right over here. Okay. Now, just like with, what was your name again? Duncan. Duncan. Your name? Kate. Kate. Just with Kate. Uh, just Kate. Just like with Duncan. 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 It's all good. <laughs> this is my little issue with speech. So, just like with Duncan, I'm going to be placing my hands on you just a little bit, okay? No problem. Okay. So, lower back pain. Who can give me a guess? Anybody can give me a guess on what causes it? Posture. posture. Perfect. Okay, what causes bad posture? Just have. Whatever you do normal, there are a lot of different things. So I'm going to show you just a little bit. From this, from this point, I can see, you can actually turn to face them a little bit. Oh, okay. My hands resting on her hips, I can see that they're about equal on either side. That's great. Love it. Face me now. Now if I were to, I'm going to have you pull your arm up just like this. Now if I were to go from this side and feel around, I can find the front of her hip here and the back here. Now who can see the angle? If you can't see, you can go ahead and take a stand up if you'd like. 
between the, my finger in the back and my finger in the front, draw a straight line. Is it parallel to the ground? No. No. This is called an anterior tilt. What happens is, who here has seen what a pelvis looks like? One or two of you? Okay, good. That works. For those who don't know, along your pelvis there is a ridge. It goes arch like this. These are the two sides. That is what I'm looking for. I'm touching the front point. Very good. You know your anatomy. This Artist. Is, obviously. <laughs> So you have the front point and the back point of, I'm, tr forgive me, I'm trying to keep this a little low oh, key. Oh, it's okay, so sorry. That's like those who don't know all the technical terminology. <laughs> At that arch, the point in the back, the point in the front, if it's a straight line across, if you could draw a straight line parallel to the ground, that's perfect. If not, we have this. So you have an anterior tilt in your pelvis. What that does is a few things. And yes, I'm going to explain why this causes the pain. So what you have, is you have a pelvis that is essentially being tilted forward like that okay so what happens is the muscles in the front your quad muscles attach to that front point and if they get tight they're going to pull down that's going to tilt it forward if the muscles in the back right here especially where you feel the pain most of the time if these muscles get tight they're going to pull up and that's going to make the back go up this does two things for you one it gets that thing that every, guys you gotta level with me everybody kind of likes it a little bit to see it gives you that nice little <clears throat> <laughs> And don't get me wrong, it is kind of cool sometimes. However, from a structural perspective, it's not a good idea. Or as a runner. <laughs> yeah, or as a runner. So this is the reason why it's not a good idea. Whoever played with building blocks as a kid? Preferably the kind that you don't actually connect. They, you just set it on top and hope. Yep. Okay, you ever played Jenga? <laughs> you ever see what happens when everything gets out of balance? The whole thing just, <laughs> Same thing here. So your vertebrae are stacked, one on top of each other. Now it's stacked in such a way that they keep their balance normal. Now if that line that I was talking to you about with the hip here, here, my elbows, for example, if that line gets tilted, the whole thing gets out of whack and it becomes, becomes very difficult to keep structure the way it's supposed to. Here's the problem. If your bones aren't providing the proper structure for you to stay up, your muscles are gonna try. That's what's causing the pain, okay? So remind me, we'll see if we can't get you on for just a few minutes. Okay. All right, go ahead and have a seat. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. So how do you reduce fatigue as a massager? So, you know, oh, say, I'm the one doing the massage and I get tired? Yeah. That is a perfect question. I love that. Who here likes to give a massage? I mean, everybody here likes to get one, right? Yeah. <laughs> like four people who said yes. Okay, got it. I'm you're forced to receive one. I'm sorry. I'm oh. I feel your pain. No, literally, I felt your pain. Anyway. Okay, so the question was, what as a person giving a massage can you do to relax, uh, to reduce the amount of fatigue? Sir, can I have you come up here for just a moment? Sure. You can, don't get me wrong, you can always say no. No, I can't. <laughs> Alright, so if you're going to give a massage, how would you do it? Uh, so generally I'm using my thumbs and stuff. And using your thumbs, okay. Lean them in. Lean them in, okay. So, how much of your grip do you think you're using? Or actually, better yet, what area of you gets tired first? Like right here. Right there? Yeah. So, your hand. Mm -hmm. Got it. You use a lot of grip, you use a lot of tightening and just go digging in there? Is that about what I'm hearing? Is that about right? Sure, or, you know, needing up. Don't oh, sure me. Tell me if that's right. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the person, I guess, too. you got to kind of read okay. your target. Okay. This is an excellent question. This is something that I asked the very first time I went to have a professional massage done to me. And the real trick to giving a good massage and not tiring yourself out is to not use your muscles. That sounds weird. But we're going to say, instead, use your body weight. Use leverage. Use what you can in order to do your best. And not get tired. So this is what I'm going to do. We're going to say this is somebody's body, not yours, thank goodness. Does that be a weird looking body? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, my body has a tag on it, you snap it real easy. Well, anyway, so for a lot of people, if they're going to give them a massage, actually, this will work even better. Here, hold this. A lot of people, who massages shoulders? Several people, okay. A lot of people massage shoulders kind of like this. Sound like, does this look about familiar? That kneading motion, good motion, great massage work. It's gonna tire you out real fast. What you wanna do as something, for example, you asked specifically, you do this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Digging in there, okay. Without digging in there and using your thumbs and moving it around, what I'm gonna have you do to me 
is I'm going to have you push against my back, and instead of using your thumb like this, I want you to lock your thumb, lock your wrist, lock your elbow, lean in, and then just move your arm. Okay? Give a shot at that. Tell me what you think. Oh, that feels nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, compared to what you've done before, how long do you think you can keep that? Mm, I don't know. Probably about the same amount of time. Probably about the same amount of time for you. That's okay, you'll get stronger. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I'm going to work in a specific targeted area, like one specific point, I can come in from, a side, from an angle. If I have them lying down, it's even better. If I have them sitting up, that works too. As a matter of fact, let's do it. Come here, have a seat. Okay, I just had you work on me right about here. Now, if I was doing this, yeah, it can kind of tire you out for a while. If I want to do this and not get tired, I'll tell you what, man, I could stand here all day. <laughs> and just with a little bit of motion, I can really work it. How does that feel? Good. He nods. He doesn't tell me how it feels. I have no idea. Just want you to stop. <laughs> yeah, I can keep a position like that literally for hours. Thanks very much. Go ahead and have a seat. I can keep a position like that for hours and continue to work. It's not working hard. Learning how to give a good massage is learning how to work smart. If you don't want to get tired, and trust me, you might not want to continue working on someone, but if someone's working on you, you're going to want them never to stop. <laughs> so if you need to, you can teach them this. Don't work hard, work smart. And the best way to work smart, find out the best way to add leverage. You can put in your own body weight on something, just like I could just I could stand like this and have no cares in the world for like a good 45, 50 minutes if I really wanted to. Is it gonna hurt me none? Sorry, that was a weird way to put it. Is it gonna hurt me at all? No, not really. Is it gonna do something to the table? Yeah, eventually. You won't see it, but if that were a body, oh man, it's gonna feel good. So, do we have any other questions? No, okay. So this is what I'm gonna do now. We're gonna talk a little bit about a specific style that we do. This is more geared towards those people who actually have pain issues, structural problems. Yes, question. Great, well, I'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> so, we do something called a specialized structural massage. The concept of this massage is that if you have issues, because of what we have studied, what we learn, what we know about the human body, we can find those issues, just like I've mentioned before, talking about shoulders, talking about the hips, talking about the lower back. These are all issues that we can work through because I love having people come into my office and leave smiling, happy, and thinking, oh, that was the best thing ever. If I have worked on them giving what I call a fluff and buff, which is just the, come on in to Massage Envy and let's rub lotion on you for an hour. Sorry, no offense to Massage Envy, they actually gave me the idea to become a therapist. No problems there. But if that's all it is, eh, it's nice until about the time you get to your car. If you actually have real problems, I want to show you what I can. So, our style. If I'm working on a body and it's on the table like this, I can lean in like a standard massage therapist and drop maybe 40% of my body weight. What do you think? 40, 50%? About from here up of oh, weight? Is that not right? If you pick your feet up, you can, you know, go <laughs> Not quite. Now, however, some of you have noticed there's an apparatus of bars in the back. If you haven't noticed, take a look. This is a massage cage that is designed by my mentor. And its concept allows me to, instead of dropping in, oh, I don't know, 30, 40% of my body weight here, I can hop up, have you on the table, grab the bars, and I can drop as much as you need. If you have never been able to get, up, you know, as deep as you wanted, today you're going to get to see it. We can drop in as much as you need, or because we have the bars for balance, as light as you want. <laughs> Yay! So, what we do, muscle has this thing that it becomes easily confused. And there's no better way to confuse a muscle than to make it vibrate. That sounds weird. <laughs> but honestly, it works wonders. By using a mixture of compression where we're gonna push in and get some really deep pressure in there and then vibrating that muscle, we're gonna cause that muscle to go like, whoa, whoa, wait, what the, oh, I give up. And it will relax. It might take a moment, but it will. So what we are going to do as I said before, oh, as I said before, this is Fluttershy's guide to massaging a bear. So we need some volunteers. I need a bear, a bear to volunteer. 
Someone who hasn't volunteered before. You, okay, great. What I'm gonna have you do actually is go to the back. Okay, and I'm on my way. That's where I had to set up, but I didn't have Right there. Yep. Okay. Execute. <laughs> do you have issues with people touching you with their feet? Uh, nope. Good, because I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Before you? any of, if you have issues with people touching your feet, you aren't the first. I, just, I have had people way. who were very squeamish about the idea of my feet on them. Bear with me. The socks are clean. I changed them. That's why I'm not in my cosplay anymore. I had to go change my socks and all that. And I'm like, I'm not going to. Wear all of that right now. <laughs> so, massage mage. Hmm? Massage mage. Yeah, exactly. Derpy <laughs> the massage mage. All right. So, what I am going to do is I'm going to hop up. Where do you experience most of your pain? Uh, usually in the upper shoulder area. Upper shoulder area. Shoulder okay. In that case, I'm going to switch it around. I'm going to have you flip over. Okay. Scoop down so that your head's on the table and not in the. Okay. Head here, dude. <laughs> what kind of flip? Head here, <laughs> head here, face up. That's what I was doing, and then you're like lower here. <laughs> oh. My bad. All right, I'm gonna place the bolster under your knees. This is for comfort and support. Come on down, so your head's not in here. This will be more comfortable with your head there. Shoot, I'm just gonna make you work out today. Cause I'm gonna have you stand up. I want to show everybody something first. Okay. <laughs> Okay, stand right here, face that way. Face Carly, I know she's pretty. Okay, take a look at this. Everybody take a look to see where your shoulders are right now, okay? Can you see this? Now this is the part that is going to be kind of cool, but a little bit boring for you because this is going to take just a couple of minutes. Not a lot, maybe five minutes, maybe less. I'm going to work. That's okay, I'm making funny faces behind your back. Don't worry. So, what I mentioned earlier about people who have issues with their shoulders. I'm gonna work out his pectoralis muscles, the muscles in the front that make you go if you're a guy and if you're a girl, hey, it still makes you good. <laughs> so, I'm gonna be working primarily right here. You don't mind if I touch you? No. Good, because I already did. So, I'm gonna have you lie face up, just like I had you a moment ago, and I promise I'm not gonna make you get up for another five minutes at least. Go ahead and have a seat. Okay. I'm gonna be working those muscles, particularly using a combination of pressure and vibration to get those muscles to relax. And then once I'm done, I'm going to have him stand up, face Carly again, because she's really cute. And then show everybody the difference. If you see the difference, fantastic. If you don't, I'll be surprised. So, while I'm doing this, Carly is going to explain. The idea with pressure, if you're going to do this, I don't recommend it unless you've got something to make sure that you're not going to fall off. Because mm. if you do, you could very easily hurt yourself or anyone else. To do that, you can use a wall, you can use a coat rack, you can use your sister. <laughs> I've used uh, kitchen chairs before. There you go. So I move into a second position because there are two pectoralis muscles. Go ahead and move to them. So pec minor is the one that actually comes up and attaches in the front of the shoulder. Pec major comes through and attaches actually into the arm. So it actually comes like this. So when those muscles get tight and pull forward, um, they pull on the back. So we, we feel it in between the shoulder blades because these muscles are being pulled to the point that they can't function properly, which leads to dehydration, pain, knots, other things like that. No, uh, right across the shoulder. Okay. Thanks for the input. Yeah, we want it to be like that hurt so good feeling in an area that's tender, but never excruciating. Because 
there's and, a lot of releasing going and on. And talk as yeah. it happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're releasing those nerves, so they're kind of... You can actually already see, if you were at this side, you can actually see... Yeah, if a few of you want to come over and take a look from the back, you can actually see the difference in the elevation of the shoulder on this side and the shoulder on that side. This one's actually more touching the table, and this one's up off of the table. As, about how long have I been up here so far? Any guesses? Yes. Two minutes? I'm already making a difference, you can see. <laughs> yeah, the goal is to open up the chest, get the shoulders back, um, allow the scapula to go back to its natural position without forcing the bone itself. What happens with muscle tension, all of our muscles attach to bones, so when those muscles get tight and imbalanced, they pull our bones out of place. So rather than going in and trying to force the bones back where they want to be, we release the muscles, which then allows the bones to naturally go back to their placement. So three of the biggest things we see with this modality are improved posture, decrease in pain, and increase in flexibility range of motion. Okay, now after I finish this side, I'm gonna do both at the same time. You will experience a bit of a stretch with it and some of the best modification that I'm gonna be able to you'll be able to see. Right. How's the con going for you so far? Good so far. Glad to hear it. Yeah, it's been fun. You getting to hear the auction yet? Nope. Of course not, it's going on right now. <laughs> Alright, now, bear with me, whatever you do, don't tense up, okay? You got it. Just no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really gonna jump on. Yeah, this, is this is the fun part because with the right amount of pressure in the right spot, I can make a little T-Rex out of you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Look at those arms. I love it. <laughs> a little T-Rex right here. Okay, let's drop in, get some vibration. I want you to take a nice deep breath for me. A deep breath from the chest. Okay, one more. I swear. It's just a shock. It's okay. I understand now, but at first. So I actually have a question, like, I have a problem with, like, when people give me shoulder massages, like, they're like, you're too tense, you're too tense, I'm like, but I can't relax because it hurts. It's so, like, you have, like, advice for, like, as being patient, relaxing, you know, like, not breathing. tensing up, just, just breathing, breathing. Just breathing. thinking just of relax. I'm hoping to get it. Okay. Just really, <laughs> <laughs> really help to relax. Okay, take a look, what do you think? I'm not going to say that the friends are no. shoulder massages. Oh, okay. 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 Remember this line right here? <laughs> this line, when we first started, and, and uh, he'll have the video for it. This line, when we first started, was going about this direction. So we made a difference of approximately five degrees angle in about five minutes. If I can make a difference of five degrees in five minutes, imagine what I can do in a full body session on this. Any questions at the moment? Do you feel different, guy? Uh, take a deep breath. I'm pretty sore in here, but wow. <laughs> that happens. When's the last time you had a massage on your chest? <laughs> Enough said. Yeah, we're good. Take a deep breath. When's the last time you had a deep breath like that? <laughs> All that pressure, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, what do you think, though? How are your shoulders? Feels good. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Now here's the funny part. Most of his shoulder pain was in the back. Did I work on his back at all? No, nope. no. No. Why? Because it's not so important to work where you feel the pain the as it is to work where the pain is being caused from. I didn't realize that's what this cage was for. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this has been in the ox room all day. It has been. I walked in and I'm like, what is this? But it's yeah, staff true. members have been I using it was coat two. rack. <laughs> this now, I guess it makes more sense now. Well, I was like, is this for us? What is this? And everyone's like, ugh. <laughs> that's yeah. great. So thank you very much for coming over here. All right. Yes, question. Um, so if you are trying to do this on a person who is squeamish about feet, then what would you suggest? If you want to try working on someone with your feet yes. and they don't want to work with your feet, you don't work with your feet. That's really the bottom line. The whole goal of giving a massage is for the other person to be as comfortable as they can be. Now granted, if you're trying to give a massage that is going to help to repair someone who has real issues, Comfort may not always be there. 
Some of the bits of work that I do can be quite uncomfortable, but that's because I'm trying to cause the body to go back into a state where it's supposed to be, and it is so used to not being in that state, it's gonna hurt a little bit. I can attest to that with the shoulder injury, so some of it hurt. Yeah. It Almost as bad as the injury. The best thing that I can recommend if you have someone who doesn't really want you to work on their feet. Thanks, Julie. I don't have to wear a slumber jersey. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, seriously, though, the best option that you have if you have someone who's a little bit squeamish about having you work with your feet, work with your hands. But this is the best way to do it. If you've got something that you can work with, a chair like this, a stool like this, a table, uh, a couch. I've worked on a few people just on a couch in their home. It's happened. You can get on the side like this and then you can drop in. It's not the best necessarily, I can't drop as much, but it's better leverage. And what I can't do in weight, I can do in leverage. Any other questions at the moment? Yes? Uh, not a question, but she really needs massage. I know. We'll okay. you. <laughs> Carly's going to work on that. I got you. I think you already did the upper back and the lower back, right? Yes, I mentioned that. Anyone else can have a question? I don't. So can't okay. All right. <laughs> he said you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's low back. Oh, it's my neck. It's my neck. Oh, okay. Face up. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.
that enervates your entire arm. Brachial plexus. Yep. I know that one so if I put pressure here, not only am I putting pressure on a muscle, what else am I putting pressure on? The arm. No one? I just said it. Nerve. Said it. Yeah, nerve. Oh, okay, there you go. Putting pressure on a nerve. Who's ever had a nerve pressed? How good did it feel? Terrible. Uh, almost oh, almost as bad as the injury. Because <laughs> they had to push it back into place. Ow. Yeah, it was bad. So, like I just mentioned, if I'm going to work on your neck, I'll tell you right off the bat, this is going to hurt, okay? But no, it's not going to hurt for long. So, as far as necks go, yes, there's a lot of issues that people have with necks. You can work. <laughs> <laughs> We're scaring other people. I missed something. <laughs> so we're trying to come into this room. Right? <laughs> 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 it's not working. Blood or evil, sorry. Okay. So, if I'm going to work on a neck, I'm going to be putting a lot of pressure in here to really strip out a muscle. If you want to try to do this to someone, keep in mind a few things. One, it is going to hurt. It really is. In all seriousness, it, it will hurt. If you don't know what you're doing, don't. <laughs> don't, don't try to be the, the person who's like, oh, I've heard about chiropractic. Let me, let me take a look and see if I can do this. I'm going to pop your neck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't be that guy. There's always that guy somewhere. Don't be that guy. My <laughs> Even making her scared her scared of the whole time. What about wrists? <laughs> Just out of curiosity. Wrists? Okay, give me an example. I crashed on my bike three years ago. I still have problems with my wrists. With your wrists? Yeah. Okay, now I'm actually going to use that as an example for my own life. Okay. <laughs> Wrist injury back in. What year is it? 2015. Got it. Okay, so. 9 to 10 for you? Early. <laughs> <laughs> Never. No. Thank you. Okay, um, it was early 2013. I was in a bike accident, landed on my wrist, thought I broke it, but it apparently I didn't. But it caused an issue with my wrist. I couldn't hardly turn it. You know, like, I could go about that far versus about that far. Okay, so it was almost like a mirror, except this one is going all over the place and this one's going. <laughs> As far as what I did to fix it, I was taught a way to do something, and this is something that you can all learn a little bit of. I'm going to show you one thing. I kind of, sort of, shouldn't, but you know, I was told not to, but I, oh well. Like, the question's been asked. I think I'll be okay with this one. So um, if you're in the back, you're going to kind of want to come a little bit closer because I'm going to show you something kind of cool. This is something that we call self-massage. Something that you can do for yourself. Now, a licensed massage therapist can also do this for you. And it hurts. <clears throat> but when I did it for the first time, I heard, and everybody else who was with me, heard this loud pop. And I was like, oh! 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 Oh, yes! And my wrist could move. Great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get down, hands and knees, I'm going to lay my arm down, face up. Well, which side's the face? <laughs> the palm. I think. There's no nose. I can't tell. So anyway, I'm gonna lie. I'm gonna lie down, palm up, and then using my knee, I'm gonna get in there and just crush it, essentially. <laughs> so it looks something like this. And then I drop in, and here's the painful part. Here comes the noise. I'm looking forward to it. Roll forward. Oh. <laughs> You'll notice if you try, your arms, your hands gonna go <laughs> because all of the muscles in here are responsible for this motion. You put pressure, and it's gonna start to close. You can do the same on this side. Now, what, what you would do is about three positions: here, here, here. Don't get too close to any joint. You might actually injure yourself. Don't do it. And then again, here, here, here. The idea is. This is a way that you can massage your own arm, and anyone who has ever tried to massage or does a lot of work with their hands knows what it's like to have pain here. That's something that you can do to help out yourself. If you know someone who is having issues, don't try to teach that to them because you haven't actually done it yet. Maybe you know, practice a little bit. If you see it works for you, great, go for it. But what you can do if they've got issues with their wrist, for example, you, I'm just gonna have you look over. Okay, hold on, you're gonna be at the table. Oh, I'm a table? Yeah, you're a table. Magnificent table, isn't it? <laughs> so what you can do is just have them up there, and you can just put in pressure, drop into it, 
and then just hold it and move it, roll it a little bit back and forth. So you'll be doing it you know, in those three areas along the arm here, have it flip it over, do it on those areas. It'll help. If you get lucky like me, this is not the common case. You'll hear and feel the loud pop, which means whatever was causing that issue has been fixed. <laughs> there are many other things that I can do for that. Um, and most of them are painful, but also highly effective. And just like with neck work, I promise it's short-lived. Okay, now I want you to take a look at Carly over here. We nicknamed her Thumper because look at that. <laughs> She's got the vibration that you may not have seen when I was working a little bit earlier. But this is the type of vibration. Mine is a little more subtle, but just as effective. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> that, that's me. Sorry. I, I'm in the military, and then I'm Zulu Combat Ninja. Don't worry about it. So. I think she might be interested in that for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this is the type of work that we do. Uh, if you do have any extra questions, of course, we are more than willing to answer whatever you have. Now, let's see the result. It's been about five minutes. Look at that thing! <laughs> Give her a hand! Ah, very good question. <laughs> that means we're going to go into the next one. Ooh. And since you were the one who brought it up, we're going to have you on the table. Okay. You got the issue, right? No, yeah, I do. Oh, wait, <laughs> are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Is that your final <laughs> answer? That is my final answer. Okay, because you said no to start. Do you have a card? You said I have a card. <laughs> also, for those who are interested in, in interested in actually receiving a session like this, we do uh, perform these massages here locally in Salt Lake City area, not far from St. Mark's Hospital. We are more than willing to book you in for a session. We normally charge about 80 bucks, and I know that's not a great deal, but we've got a uh, first-timer special. If you want to come and take a look at it, uh, then Carly and I can talk to you about exactly what we're going to offer. I myself... She's like shocked. My neck pain is gone. <laughs> I know, imagine what we can do for the entire body. Now, we really do want you to be able to come away with this, not just thinking, oh yeah, they were just trying to solve massages. We want you to be able to know that you've learned a little bit of something about massage to be able to help you if you want to massage someone, of course, totally for free because you have to be licensed in order to make money doing it. <laughs> Don't tell the government. I'm sure someone says, yeah, five bucks. Is <laughs> but um, I lost where I was going with that one. <laughs> I work for muffins. <laughs> so, what we're really just trying to do is bring body awareness. Just trying to help you guys be more aware of your body, about what's going on, about and about what you can do to make it help, or where you can go to get help. All right. In answer to your question, though, with remember how I mentioned the areas that you were experiencing. Uh, the, the areas that are causing it, how the muscles in the back are tightening yes, up, raised up, spots tightening, lowering it down. Those are the areas that we would work in order to be able to see some improvement. Now, we want you to be able to see some improvement. We have a couple of minutes left if I can read this far, and I can't really. So what's the time? 4.52. 4.52. Great. We've got eight minutes, give or take. So we'll go ahead and put you on. Carly, we'll work a little bit for you. Okay, which way do you want me? <laughs> for no bag. So what Carly is going to do, what Carly is going to do is she's going to work a little bit in the low back in those areas here where I mentioned, and then she's also going to work some of the quads in the front, getting these muscles loosened up. They're not tight, they're not pulling. Okay? I said I really want to know more about the quads. Your quads are probably, Carly's definitely needed. For those who are interested, by the way, in actually receiving a session, I do, uh, for the con, I'm doing first time 45 bucks. It's a really good deal if that's what you want to take a shot at. If not, that's fine. Our, as Carly mentioned, our main goal here isn't necessarily to book sessions with you guys, but it is to bring a little bit of awareness and help you understand a little bit more about massage and what you can do. Any other questions at the moment? Yes. What about uh, headaches? <laughs> Headache? Okay. What Carly was doing a moment ago is working specifically for the head as well. Well, she did most of the shoulders. Um, for headaches, it really depends. There are different ways to find out like where the headache is. My favorite way, just because I think it's funny, not necessarily because their client thinks it's funny, is to put a lot of pressure in one spot and say, okay, it's over in your head. And if they can go like this, and I say, okay, rate the scale, one to 10, what's the pain? Oh, it's about a five, okay. How about hair? Oh, it's a two. Okay, how about hair? Ah! <laughs> 
I found the cause of the headache. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not on the scale. Can you put that in number four? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good one. But uh, for, ne for headaches, the thing about headache is there's a lot of different causes for headache. The number one cause of headache, especially in the United States, is actually dehydration. So the first thing, and this is the fun thing about pain medication. If you're going to take a pain med, like aspirin, Tylenol, Midol, I know I take Midol for my worst headaches. But if you're taking medication, it's actually the water that really makes a difference. That's why they tell you to drink water with it, because it's helping to rehydrate you as the painkiller is taking its effect. That helps you to temporarily nullify the pain, and then the hydration will help you keep it away. As far as if you actually have, say, a tension headache or migraines, then the work that I do, especially on necks, is highly effective for it. I do not recommend that you just work on someone's neck. You can actually cause damage. But I can teach you a few things really quick about it, and that was the neck can take more pressure than you think. Um, find, know your anatomy, know where the muscles are in the direction they go, and work with it. So, come here. If I'm gonna work your neck, now I'm not gonna do it, Right. but if you were lying down on my table and I was actually angled like this, which I can't do, you're tall. I know. <laughs> not really I would though. find your muscles here, and I know that there are three muscles that go down in this direction. So I would work straight down that way, one stroke each, and it's going to be a lot, a lot more pressure than that. Like right there, right. there. And that will help yeah. to get the muscles loosened up. Because here's the big question: What causes the muscles to be in pain? Anyone? Just having to sit there and keep the bones where stress. Okay. There's a knot word that I'm thinking. Oh. <laughs> Who's ever had knots? Who's, who knows exactly what knots are? To save you the trouble. It's, over, it's just over tension. <laughs> Pretty close, yes. Yeah. What happens with a knot is very simple, actually. And I'm going to try to make it as easy to understand as possible. You've got muscles, you've got muscle fibers, and you've got you know, like individual muscle you know, strands and whatnot. All those stuff are surrounded by a little substance called fascia. Think uh, saran wrap. Who's ever used saran wrap? OK, have you ever taken it where you pull it off, start to tear it, and the whole thing just goes or am I the only one? No. Okay. Yeah. You ever try to get it back out nice and straight and flat and you know perfectly like see through like you could actually put it up and someone will walk into it? Oh. Yeah. No, it doesn't. But that's what a knot is. Around each muscle is wrapped a substance called a substance called fascia, and those fascia have a whole bunch of little fibers in it that give it its strength so it doesn't tear. When those fibers get all bunched up together, that's a knot. What that means is all that muscle starts to get tight because of the the wrapping around it is now short. <clears throat> so the real, the main purpose in working, we talk a lot about muscles and how we're trying to get a muscle to relax and everything, and that's true. But if we aren't able to get them, if there's a knot and we need to get it out, you know, the muscle's not going to loosen up well. I'm not exactly sure where I went with this. What was the original question? Uh, what, what's knots? a knot? Uh, knots. <laughs> Neck work. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, thanks. So if I'm going to work your neck, I want you to strip out, is what we call the muscle. And that includes putting enough pressure in there to cause the entire muscle to go and be like, oh, what are you doing? And then put it on the rack, as it were, by just going, okay, you're going to be straight and you're going to be longer than you are. And doing that will help to actually accomplish it. On a neck, it's going to hurt. There's no two ways around it. It's, it's going to hurt. But it's also going to work. <laughs> okay, we just have a moment left. Any more questions? Do you, yes. need to ch you, you said that posture, bad posture, has a lot to do with habit. Yes. After you get this sort of work done or, or posture work done on you, do you have to then pay attention to your habits as well so that it doesn't revert back? Yes. And what we do, Carly and I, we will just, when we have a session, we will discuss with a person exactly what the posture issues are. So we don't just you know, go like, oh, you just have shoulder pain? Okay, let me work on that for now. No, we're going to give you the full body assessment, take a look, see what you've got, explain it to you, and then and this is the important part. After we work with you, our work's not perfect. And from day-to-day -day life, whatever it is that you do in life, your body's eventually going to kind of go back to the way it was. If you play a computer, if I stopped trying because I'm a gamer, I will eventually find myself about 20 years from now with a posture like this walking around. I know people like that. <laughs> and people will say, put your arms down. They are. <laughs> this is what they're used to. Yep. There are exercises that you can do. There are things that you can 
try that will help to keep your posture in the way it is, we call it homework because that's what you do when you're not with us. As far as everything else goes, one session, it's great, but it's not permanent. The body will never permanently be placed in a position unless you're filling yourself up with bars. This is why I don't recommend you get surgery and have them put a bar in your back. I've seen that one before. It's like, which would you rather have? Something that costs this much, takes this much time, and makes it so you will never be able to do this again. <laughs> or something that's gonna cost about that much, take maybe about that much time, because it takes time to repair a body that is so used to being in a way that is you know, not supposed to be. <laughs> but in the end, you'll still be able to do this. <laughs> it's, massage is a wonderful tool that we have in the world of medicine. And while it's not necessarily rec uh, recognized yet by like insurance companies, it just kind of depends on who you've got, it is an alternative that you can try that often has excellent results. I won't say always, because I have worked with people before who when I was done, they're like, eh, it didn't really do much for me. Does it happen? Yes, it does. It's not common. Most of the time, I see wonderful results. But it is there, it is an option for you, it is something that you can try, and there are books out there if you want to learn how to do it on your own. The main thing about being licensed, like myself and Carly, means that we can charge you for it. <laughs> and we also have a lot of experience and a lot of training. So there are a lot of things that you can do though. A lot of things in massage books that you can read to help you take a look at it. There are a few that I do have recommendations on. Um, unfortunately, I don't have time to list them all. But uh, there's one, ABCs and Massage. Great one. Any last questions before we're done? No? Excellent. Thank you all very much for coming. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the time. Thank you.